Hello everybody. So Belgium, they want to build this energy island and it turns out that it is going to be a fantasy island instead. So let's dive into what is going on here. I'll, I will show you the news, I will show you some figures and then we can derive some conclusions. So first we have to see what is happening. So Belgium, they basically want to build a energy island. This energy island is meant to connect offshore wind parks to the shore and it is also meant as a kind of an interconnector between the United Kingdom and Denmark. At this moment it looks like it is going to become much more expensive than they initially thought. So here we see the, the, the news. This is by the Belgium Times basically, the tight. And, and here you can see that industry is asking for a pause in the construction of this energy island. Now over here you can see a lot of important people posing in front of one of these caissons that they are going to use to uh, build this island in the North Sea. And this person over here is the federal minister, uh, Tine van der Straten, and this is one of her uh, pet projects, so to speak. She was elected in order to kill nuclear, to make sure that more wind would be built and eventually uh, it, it all turns out to be one big sand castle or air castle or whatever you want to call it. Now, this island, I mean, it, it, the island in itself is not that, that special. Uh, the point is that offshore in infrastructure, whatever it is, will always be, will always be expensive. Um, it, it's just a guarantee. In the Netherlands, we've learned that attaching a gigawatt of offshore wind will cost you roughly one and a half to two billion euros. So if you want to have 10, uh, 10 gigawatts of wind, then you will have to, you know, pay 15 to 20 billion euros, not to build a wind farm, but to, to make sure that the wind farm gets attached to the shore. And this island is basically the same principle. Uh, they have 2.2 gigawatts of wind. That's probably already connected to the to the shore somehow. And then they want to increase that with another three and a half gigawatts. And they have to attach that to the shore as well. And that's why they want to use this energy island. Now, initially it should have costed 2.2 billion euros. But instead, right now, they are seeing it's going to cost somewhere between 7 and 8 billion euros. Now, keep in mind, this is infrastructure that does not generate any power, right? So people tend to look at nuclear power plants and see these cost overruns, and then they say, listen, uh, the, these things are becoming too expensive. Yes, I agree to some degree that uh, these things are getting too expensive. However, they do generate power and they can generate revenue. So there is a basis to actually repay the debt that has been built. And in this case, that's not entirely uh, what is going to happen. Uh, the people who are uh, saying, please stop building this island are not small parties. Uh, we're talking about Boss F, for instance. Boss F is one of the largest uh, chemical industries in the world. Here the essence, this is pretty interesting because they, they here they break it down. Uh, the largest in the industrial energy consumers are calling for the construction of the energy island in the North Sea to be paused as costs threaten to rise from 2 billion to 7 billion euros. They fear that the project of the power grid operator Elia in the North Sea will lead to further major increases in the energy bills of the households and companies. And, and here you can see two uh, major political parties uh, basically saying the same. Now the trouble is, if you if you pay seven billion for this this transformer island, which which it basically is, um, it, 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 the question is how what is the what is the operational life span of this island? You know, is it going to work for twenty years? Is it going to work for 40 years? What about the equipment that's there? When does it need to be replaced or does it need to be upgraded or whatever? So let's say that it is 25 years. What you basically need to do is, is you have to spread the 7 billion euros over, you know, over a time frame of 25 years. As long as you're repaying the debt, basically making sure that the debt get, will, will be paid and somebody has to pay for this debt, and that's the consumer in the end, the, 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 the parties were going to buy that electricity. 
Now, this is this is basically uh, this is basically what it boils down to. The Belgian energy fantasy is unraveling before our eyes. So, this person over here, uh, Tine van der Straten, who is the architect of this disaster, her uh, basically ambition it was to exit nuclear completely by 2025. Uh, this has failed. We will we will see why later on. Uh, she said that she was going to make sure that more renewables would get built, and, and especially offshore wind. Uh, that's why they needed to build this energy island, which I believe is now a fantasy island. And in order to ensure security, so so energy security, they would have to build at least two, maybe even three new natural gas plants, and and, and that's the real. Uh, I mean, that's it. It just it, it, it. I can't justify closing nuclear power plants and replacing them with gas plants just because you want your want to have your wind and your solar. I mean, I'm always lost for words whenever I see things like this happening. They happen in Germany. They're potentially now happening in Spain, and Belgium is in the process of making the same mistake. So Belgium used to have seven operational nuclear power reactors. On the left you see Tihange, there were three power reactors there, one of them has been closed. And over here on the right you see Dual, and Dual had four uh, reactors, one and two, they they, they share the, the, the turbine building, and then you have I believe three and four over here. So when we look at it from a numbers perspective, right, Tihon, uh, they, they have five left at this moment. Uh, Tihon 2 has been closed. This was the reactor that sparked all the controversy in Belgium, where they found uh, cracks in the reactor pressure vessels. They eventually they turned out not to be cracks, but they turned out to be hydrogen inclusions. Uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, they did destructive tests on material that came from these RPVs, and they said, listen, you can operate your power plants uh, conform spec. Uh, but they, they closed these uh, these two units regardless, which are Tihonge 2 and Dual 3. So they were both forged in the same forge in Rotterdam, and they had the same issues. Now, the other reactors, as you can see, they're still roughly um, <clears throat> there's still roughly three gigawatts left or four gigawatts I'm sorry four gigawatts left now the two largest reactors dual uh, dual four and Tionge four they have had their lifetime uh, operational lifetime extended to 2035 so this was basically the defeat of Tine van der Straten's ambition to end nuclear power in Belgium. Uh, this was done partially because of uh, political pressure. Uh, and uh, I, I personally, I still hope that we can save the three other reactors that are still operational. So we're talking about Tihange 1, uh, almost 1000 megawatts, and Dual 1 and 2 together, also almost 1000 megawatts. So they stand to lose 1.8 uh, gigawatts by at the end of 2025. Now the end date for Dual 2 is closing, is 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 coming in fast. Uh, or, or wait a second, it's Dual 1, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, the 15th of February 2025, so that's like four months from now, uh, it, it will have to close and that's really bad. So let's check the numbers. Let's make some, uh, some, 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 let's try to make some sense out of this. So what you see here is a graph of all the, ener all the energy, energy produced by source. We have wind on the bottom, which is blue. Then we have PV, which is yellow. Then we have other, and there is a lot of other in Belgium. That's mainly because of industrial gases that are being burnt. That's the purple one. Then we get brown. Those are the fossil fuels. That's only natural gas. And then we get the orange one, uh, which is nuclear. Now you can see this jagged line with nuclear, and that's mainly because of the panic that was caused by the so-called cracks that they could find. If we look at the demand figures in Belgium, then we can see that demand has been uh, basically going down. And this has been going down since 2015. And in the past couple of years, it has been going down uh, slightly quicker. And that has mainly because, because of inflation, but also because the 
economy in Belgium is contracting. There's there's less economic output in Belgium. And, and, and that basically means that you need less energy. That's a logical result of that. So they went from having 88,000 88, gigawatt hours or 88 terawatt hours per year down to uh, 79 uh, gigawatt hours per year. So they're, so they're basically contracting. They need less energy. And that's not because of energy efficiency or, or, or any of those things. That's what many people would like to believe. No, this is actually because they have less economic output. Now, this is something that I find particularly interesting. So over here, I, I basically plotted all these uh, these 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 power uh, sources uh, as a percentage of the whole. And what you can see, the orange ones, the, 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 these orange ones over here, they still up until 2023. They basically dominate the entire chart. Then you get, then you still have fossil fuels, the second biggest, and then finally wind is catching up, solar is catching up, but slowly, and the other stuff, and the other energy sources, the sin fuels, uh, the fuels that they, that you get from, uh, you know. Uh, for, uh, chemical chemistry and steel production and such uh, that remains relatively stable so if we go back up to where we see the figures what i've done is i basically i used some conditional formatting and the green is the biggest uh, the biggest source of electricity in the row and the red is the smallest source of electricity in the row and what you see is despite the two closures of two very big nuclear power plants, two gigawatts in total. Nuclear still is the biggest source of electricity in Belgium, and it should therefore be considered uh, very important to keep that alive. Uh, fossil fuels have gone down, yes, from 37% all the way down to 21%, but it's still a lot compared to, uh, you know, what it should be. So the problem is that in order to make sure that you that the Belgian economy keeps going and doesn't doesn't face blackouts because there's too because there's not enough electricity, uh, they basically say, okay, we will plan for the uh, loss of the two or, or or the three nuclear power plants that we will lose in 2025. And that, those are those are the dual one and two reactors uh, together, roughly 900 megawatts, and then there's the Tihange. Uh, I believe the TH3 reactor reaches a thousand megawatts. So what are they going to do? They're going to build two natural gas plants in uh, in, in Wallonia, in, in basically the French talking part of Belgium, and it's less than five kilometers from each other. And together, they are almost as much as the nuclear power uh, capacity that they are losing. So let's take a look at uh, at uh, at the map so that we can we can see. What, what it all means. So over here you see Belgium. Fortunately, it's not that clear, but you can see all the all the placeholders that those are all places in Belgium. Um, over here is Liège. What we have here is the nuclear power plant, the Tihange nuclear power plant, three units. Unfortunately, uh, Belgium uh, thinks that it is necessary to pixelate these as if these are, uh, you know, some, some kind of a target. But honestly, if you want to do anything, uh, freak a lot of people out, there's, there's better things that you can do than attack a nuclear power plant. Now this uh, plant over here, this used to be an old gas plant. It's no longer used, but what they're doing currently is they are demolishing this old gas plant and they're going to place an 875 combined cycle gas turbine uh, gas plant here in order to make, in order to basically uh, make up for what they lose over there in Tijonge. And then they do over here in Serene, which is uh, just to the southwest of Liège, uh, they already have a gas plant, which you can see over here, but I don't believe that this is the new one. The new one is probably going to build somewhere over here or somewhere over here or maybe somewhere over here. There's 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 enough real estate to 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 build a new gas plant in this place because there's a lot of industry that has basically left the place. Now if you look over here in the north here you have here you have Dool. This is the largest nuclear power plant in Belgium. Uh, the four units unfortunately pixelated again. And what you can see is that it is quite close 
to the Netherlands. It's, 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 you can, if you stand here, and I've been there a lot of times, you can basically see the Netherlands from, from, from where you stand here. But also interesting, the other, remember the other rubric that I showed you over here, the other row, right? The, the, that's mainly electricity that is being produced in these kinds of units. So over here you see a huge bus F uh, chemical chemical plant. It's all uh, most of it is petrochemicals, by the way, and there's always uh, a, a coal plant, uh, not a coal plant, a gas plant that works on you know uh, residual gases, uh, sin fuels, uh, or sin gases that that are that are uh, basically made during the production of uh, whatever they make in there. You can see there's 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 three of those over here. Here's another one. Uh, this is at the Esso refinery. Uh, over here we have, uh, this This one is from Arang Seo. And if we go a little bit to the west, what you see over here, this over here is a large steel plant. They have arc furnaces over here. When you have arc furnaces, you have syn gas, and the syn gas then gets used in a power plant in order to make electricity. So that's where all this other comes from. They have a lot of this kind of uh, power production so that's basically something that will remain stable as it is today because obviously as long as those uh, you know fabrication or those chemistry processes are there those gases are there and it's better to basically burn those gases and turn them into energy than to just basically flare them off somehow which is what happens as well in some places so this natural gas that's basically uh that's basically the bailout for this person's plan for Belgium, uh, a plan to basically exit nuclear uh, and enter gas. And the, 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 the thing here is, I once had a discussion with this person, and she used to be an advocate for an advocacy which was called Blixt, B-L-I-X-T. And her partner then came after me, and he said that I was I was being... Uh, I can't recall exactly. He said brutal ab, which basically means that I was like a, a, a like a monkey. What, what kind of mon what kind of a monkey was I that I dared talk to her in, in in the tone that I was using? But here's the thing. I mean, we can all see what is happening in Belgium. It's no big secret. Uh, everybody says, okay, well, yeah, she's an environmentalist. She she's green. But once you start demolishing nuclear power plants to build natural gas plants, even if that is to justify building more wind, that's impossible to call that green. So I think that this person is a big hypocrite for that. So uh, we've just checked the map. Um, here's, here's basically uh, what, what we need to do. Uh, two reactors remain operational until 2035. Those basically are saved. Three can still be saved, but that needs to be done in the political uh, arena. So people like Bert Wollons in, in Belgium, uh, those are the people I look up to because those are the people who need to uh, take the initiative to make sure that these nuclear power plants that are in perfectly good working order, that are only 40 or 50 years old, that can still operate for at least 10, maybe even 20, maybe even 30 years, uh, that that they get a chance to do that. So this, the first step that they need to undertake is, and politically, they need to make sure that there that there is a law or that 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 there is policy, that there is a moratorium on decommissioning. So once you take these power plants out of running, out of the running, you make sure that they don't produce electricity anymore. You don't decommission them straight away, which is what some of these uh, green um, overzealous people want to do. They think, okay, you switch off the nuclear power plant, you can start demolishing it straight away, which is what ha what is happening in Germany. You don't do that in Belgium. You say, okay, we we shut them down, fine. We keep the operate we keep the operators and all the staff on board. We make sure that it is being maintained and being kept in order. And then what we are going to do is we're going to prepare a we're going to make a plan to make sure that the, that the life extension for these reactors is actually possible. Again, in order to make sure that you can restart these reactors, you need to do another political thing because probably there needs to be uh, an amendment to a law somehow in Belgium, I don't recall. In the Netherlands, we need to amend the law in order to make sure that Boxel can stay operational for 70 or even 80 years. It's probably the same in Belgium. 
You have to prepare for that. You have to make a plan. And once you finally have the, the, the political consensus, the political uh, power to do this, then you have to make sure that you can execute the life extension plan. Now, this also involves the, the owners of these nuclear power plants. You have to talk with these people. You have to tell them, listen, you can't, you can't start deconstructing these plants the second that they are turned off. Um, you have to make sure that there's money for that, and you have to make sure that there's money for this uh, life extension plan and to make them operational again once they have been, you know, de not decommissioned, but shut down. So this is uh, what I think needs to happen in Belgium. I believe that it can be done. I am willing to... Uh, to talk to people in Belgium about this. I'm willing to reach out to my Belgian friends in order to get this done. So with that, you have reached the end of this video. Please uh, leave a comment down below if you want to sound off, if you want to you know, have, some, uh, have something to contribute uh, about this whole uh, issue. Um, also, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. These people, they helped me uh, make these videos because I don't do anything else. Nuclear advocacy is my only... Uh, it's not my job, but it's the only thing that I do because I can't work. Um, in any case, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.